<sighs> Roll your shoulders down your spine. Rest your hands on your knees or your thighs. And take some long, slow, deep breaths in and out. You know, I always say this is like the most important part of the meditation. I mean, just think about this. Breathing is the most important thing that we do. It's like the most vital thing. Like nothing matters if you can't breathe, not, not money, not other people's feelings, nothing. So it's funny that we can give our attention to so many other things than our breath. And the effect from the breath into the entire body is so massive that it's, it's just, it's amazing that we just like, don't learn this in kindergarten. <laughs> So as you sit here rooting through the pelvis, like imagining you are cemented to the ground, you are part of the ground. Feel the support and continue to breathe. I'm going to read from Mark Nepo's Book of Awakening. For April the 7th, being shaped by others. The whole world could praise Sang Jung Zhu, and it wouldn't make him exert himself. The whole world could condemn him, and it wouldn't make him mope. He drew a clear line between the internal and the external. Chong Zhu. These words, and if I get names wrong, just throwing it out there, sorry. Not sorry, doing my best. These words were spoken by Chang Zhu in the fourth century BCE. I read them 15 years ago and taped them to my closet so I could be reminded not to let the opinion of others shape me. I have changed a great deal since then. What I do, where I live, who I am. Many things have come and gone. And the, close, the closet to which Chao Chung Zhu's words were taped as holding someone else's clothes, but the words are in my heart, though I still struggle not to be shaped by what others think. This is at once the clearest of spiritual intents, and yet the hardest to stay true to. How to stay open to what others feel and not what they think. We cannot live without being affected by others, but we are only real when we let truth and love shape us from within. Our want to be liked, our want to avoid conflict, our want to be understood, all these traits tease us away from, the taking, from taking the voice within seriously. Though the earth is touched by everything alive, it never stops turning around the fire at its center. And though we are touched by the stories of strangers and the far-off songs of birds lost in wind, we find our way by following the Spirit's voice at our center. Too much is lost in waiting for someone else to tell us that what moves us is real. As you continue to breathe, feel the earth beneath you holding you up as it slowly turns about its center. Breathe deeply and feel how you are like the earth. Mm -hmm. 
Inhale cleanly and feel the many things that you hold up. Exhale cleanly and keep turning about your own center. Stay focused on your breath, a long, slow, deep breath in. Long, slow, deep breath out. And bringing in this awareness for you. Tapping into the possibility or the opportunity to look at how concerned you are with what other people think of you. It's incredibly insightful because my experience has brought me in contact with a lot of different types of people. And it's like, even if one is very blunt with their language and says what they feel, I still think a lot of those people have a story of being too much. And so while on the surface, it may look like I have no problem with other what other people think of me, just go in a little bit deeper. Because being too much, there will be like another level back there hidden in your core of what you're worried about other people thinking of you. And maybe it's not just everybody. You know, there are the opposite feelings of like, not enough. And often those people will care what other people think from a place of not being enough. I once set that as my intention for two teacher trainings that I did over, I think it was last summer, actually, 
no, two summers ago. Remember, like, that's it. I said it in front of everybody. My intention is to not care about what others think of me so much. And so it it's Shavasana time. Everybody's laying down. And I, in my head, think I want to put this song on, The End of Suffering by Gary Milken. And I run over and I put it in the search bar. And I see in the search results in Spotify, it says... How to Not Care What Others Think of You by Gary V and Jay Shetty. And I thought, wow, that'll probably be a great podcast. I screenshotted it and then I played the song and finished the class and finished the first training. I was driving home and I put that podcast on. And I thought, okay, this is it. <laughs> I'm going to figure it all out. Gary V is going to walk me through it. And he starts by saying, if you don't want to care about what people think of you, like you have to do that fully. You have to stop taking like compliments or um, comments from other people in which is like praise. You're so amazing. I thought, whoa, <laughs> ouch. Because for me, that's definitely been something that feeds me. It's like, this is why I do this. You know, you you helped me or you changed my life. And and I'm like, no, 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 I didn't. But I still like really feel better when I hear that. And then I thought about that, like making sense. If I care so much about people like praising me and loving me and accepting me and telling me I'm doing a good job, it makes so much sense that I will then, you know, care more <laughs> about the negative. So that is my work to like fully immerse in not taking in any like other feedback. I want to say this in the most conscious way as well of also not just being a jerk and telling everybody like, <laughs> I don't give a shit. <laughs> Just sit with that for a moment, for a moment. I say this a lot, um, and now I apply it to myself. Like, I'll hear a lot of people say, like, yoga changed my life. You know, if it wasn't for yoga. And I, I point this out all the time. That's not, that's not true. Because if yoga did that to people, <laughs> then the whole world would be at peace and everything would be like amazing, <laughs> right? Everything would be perfect. It's not yoga. Yoga is a tool and like a hammer just can't like build a house, right? It, it needs action behind it. So it, it's not yoga, it's not another person, it's you. You're the one doing your own healing. You're the one choosing to practice yoga. You're the one choosing to use the hammer to push in the nail. So I have applied that to myself. Like it, it's not me, it's just like I have this tool and then I'm like offering the tool. I'm like the assistant, <laughs> Like as surgery, I'm like the nurse that's handing over, you know, whatever the doctor's calling for. That's allow that to marinate throughout our entire practice. And if you haven't already, wiggle your fingers and toes and come back to this moment, open your eyes. And then if you're sitting on anything or you want to just like wiggle out the legs a little bit, find a new position. Please feel free to do that. And then come once again to Sukhasana or easy cross-legged pose. We're, we're starting in the fire. <laughs> we're doing hips. <laughs> Take your left leg out to the side and bring your right leg out in front of you. Try to make this alignment best you can. So hip, there's a straight line from the hip to the knee. 
which means that the leg comes like further across center and then try to make a straight line from the knee to the ankle so that it looks like half a square. And then take the other leg, the left leg, and place it on top, mirroring the right leg. And pull the toes in towards your shins so that you can protect your knees. Now, I actually have lost a bit of flexibility on this, but I know that I can, I'm super flexible in my hips. So I can make this look like, oh, that's it. Like you're, you look like, your legs look like they're, they're logs stacked because it's fire log. Or if you look at your lap and you do the outer lines of your thighs and your shins, it looks like a square, so square pose. And if you're like not even close, it's okay if it looks something like this. It's also okay if you take the bottom leg out long and do the same thing with the left leg, making like a half a square. And then you can start pushing down on the knee if for any reason you might want to add just a little bit of pressure. And a lot of the time when teachers are teaching yin, it's like, okay, well, here we're sitting. You can do something with your shoulders. So if that feels like something you want to do, you could stretch your shoulders. I really like to get in to the hips, like explore. I want you to imagine that your, your hips and your pelvis, it's like, like a house or something or a cave. And you just found it and you're going to like go through all of it. Check out all the little tunnels, all the crevices, explore the boundaries, and feel. So a lot of the time people will feel this is like tight on the, on the hips. It's your glute meat, it's your side butt. <laughs> And maybe you feel it somewhere else. Where else do you feel it? Like explore the cave of your hips and pelvis. And breathe. In yin, we're guided by three principles, right? Number one is to find your edge. So... Once you come into the posture, you want to make sure that like you can maintain this for some time without wanting to die or get out of the pose as quickly as possible. So if you think about your edge, that place I was just speaking about, that's like the 100%. That's the like, oh, I'm trying to prove something. That's the ego. Like back off. And I always share that, of course, I'm like, I have this amazingly huge ego. And she likes to be in everything. <laughs> she definitely showed up a lot in yin class. Definitely. So also don't like shame yourself. If I just called you out. <laughs> you're like, I'm so bad. No, you're normal. You're a human. And in this moment, find your edge. We find our edge so that we can then move into the next principle of like remaining completely still. And the third principle is like commit for time. So it all fits together as like once you find your edge, this is going to support you in being still for the allotted amount of time. And you don't know what the allotted amount of time is. Maybe like, you're already mad at me. I don't know. Or maybe you're like, oh, this is amazing. Whichever one it is, it's okay. And then come back to your breath. Long, slow, deep breath in. And long, slow, deep breath out.
And as you breathe, notice what's coming up for you. As you explore the cavern of your pelvis, your hips. Take one more breath. Now very slowly, come on out. Start to come back to the body, to the fact that we're about to move. Left leg is on top. Take the left leg and lean over onto the right hip and take the left leg behind you. So you're coming into a uh, pigeon pose. Now pigeon in yin is called swan. <clears throat> and in yin, we wanna take the tissues slow, right? We're working on plastic tissues. So this is why we come into the pose and take a moment and then we can start to adjust. So check in with the front leg. It does not have to be parallel to the front of the mat. You could bring the foot from, uh, or the knee from a 90 degree angle to like a 45 degree angle. So that the right foot is under the left hip. And then double check the leg behind you, making sure that it is out long. And plant your palms in the mat in front of you. In a yang practice, it is a bit more important that we're worried about the center of the pelvis here. I want you to find like the most comfy of the maybe uncomfy pose that you can. Remember, find your edge. If you're already struggling, you've gone too far. <clears throat> And then decide, like, are you going to stay up like this? Do you maybe want to come down onto your elbows? Do you want to involve any prop or anything to support? And then release, let go, breathe. You know, in the, the cavern exploration, this different pose has just opened up another tunnel to explore. Notice what you feel and where you feel it. And stay present to anything that comes up while in the posture. Is there 
emotions or pictures or a f anything like what's coming up for you and can you stay anchored to your breath long so deep breaths in and long so deep breaths out Take a breath. Very slowly, plant the palms below your shoulders. Back up to a higher swan. Sitting in this for a moment. And then once again, roll over onto the right hip and bring the left leg back on top and plant the foot on the mat on the other side. If I, I'm like, is that a clear cue? I don't know, look at me. <laughs> okay, so the foot can be down or up Notice that when it's up for me, my hip bone, like my sits bone comes off the mat. So most important, I would say, is sits bones on the mat. So then when I do that, my foot comes up. So there's clearly some type of like tightness somewhere around here. I feel it on the right hip or more like the right um, IT band, actually. So from here, take a hold of both of the ankles and then pull them back closer to the body. You can, again, do this the same way as the square. You could take the bottom leg out long and then have the top leg like this. It's totally up to you. There we go. Yeah. And then kind of like the closer into the body is what we're aiming for. 
Um, but as you can see with me, like as I'm trying to pull, it's like, no, <laughs> no, I really feel this. And I want to be sitting on both sits bones, like planted firmly on the ground. So don't lose form for the way it looks. Functional versus aesthetic, my whole jam. And then find your edge. So if you're there, okay, that's awesome. If you want to try and go a little bit deeper or less, like find that and then find a way that you can be as comfortable as you can be <laughs> in the pose for some time. Again, if you want to be doing something with your shoulders as well, that's great for you. I'm really focusing on hips right now. noticing that once again there's like this new tunnel that's opened up in the cavern of my pelvis <laughs> that I can explore based on like yesterday running so far I can feel the connection of like my my glute muscles to the outer thighs like to my IT band and directly to where I like felt that pain in my, I felt a pain in my knee on yesterday. I can feel that whole connection in my body. Which also helps me like trace it back to, because it's usually never the thing, right? Like my knee, I hurt my knee. And it's usually not the knee. That's like the symptom of what the real thing is in my body, which I think was my, is my right shoulder. And my right hip is off because of my right shoulder. So I'm kind of like feeling that right now in my body. And that's just because I have a little bit of an injury. For you, maybe there's no injury. Maybe it, just notice like where it affects in your body doing the different postures. In yin, there's a lot of relation often to, to the, the practices, like the poses and the meridians. And I love that. And <laughs> for me, it's more about the poses. And it, they're very similar, but totally different. The anatomy trains, the myofascial lines and how they affect the body. And some people might hear and be like, Ugh. <laughs> like, I don't, that's, I don't like anatomy or whatever it is. But like the, the myofascial lines are amazing. You know, someone could have fallen arches because they have tattooed eyebrows. Like that's how connected the body is. And often, right, are you going to assume that your arches are, you know, like more unsupported because you got your eyebrows like tattooed or whatever, the microblading, whatever. Doesn't mean that that's going to happen. It's just like it could be. And they can be so far apart from one another but com and completely attached, like connected. The body is incredible and amazing. A <sighs> couple more breaths. And then we're going to be Yogi Michael Jackson's. <laughs> okay. We're going to try a really cool magic trick. And if you don't get it, I'll, I'll, I'll do it and then I'll do it again. And then if you don't get it, that's okay. You're at least like feeling it in the body. So keep your legs right where they are, but also like roll up onto the knees. Okay. And then tuck both of your toes under and then straighten out the knees, lift up your hips, right? So your legs are going to be crossed. So now start to turn to the right, to the right to the right, so you're like all the way facing the opposite end of the mat, right? But keep turning to the right and you're pivoting on the balls of the feet to the right. Now the legs start to cross, but keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, and then sit back down. You're in the same pose on the other side. Very cool, right? Okay, if you're like, what? <laughs> Try it one more time, just bring it, bring it back. Okay, so this is right leg on the bottom, left leg on the top, right? Roll over onto the knees. You're like on all fours, but the legs are the way they were in the pose. Okay, then tuck your toes under. And then lift the hips up. It's like a cross-legged down dog. And then start to turn to the right. You're on the balls of the feet, so you're pivoting. Look at my heels are up. And I'm literally just like turning. There's my butt. 
on the balls of my feet. <laughs> I just took a look at the camera about what that looked like. I was like, I don't care what you guys think. <laughs> I just that was a bad joke anyways or a good joke okay so now if you didn't do it it's okay you tried it a couple times right legs on the top left legs on the bottom right so first plant the sits bones there you go now bring the feet in close to the body you know eventually the goal is like your knees are right in the center line of your body one on top of the other <laughs> not what i'm doing so find, oh yeah, pushing it a little bit. I'm trying to overdo it on this side. Clearly it hurts and I just caught myself like, hey, edge. So I'm gonna just back off even though I don't want to at all because this feels like, this feels way different than the other side. <laughs> I feel like I should be way further ahead but I know that I'm gonna be wiggling and angry very soon. So why don't I just not do that and back off a bit? I can still feel it. Don't know how long I'm going to last. There we go. And then find a way that you could be comfortable, as comfortable as you can in this posture. Again, if you want to do something with your shoulders, that's cool. For me, another tunnel has just opened in my pelvic cavern. <laughs> and I'm going to explore that. It feels completely different on this side. And I can still feel it on like the injured side more. I can, I can like deduce in my own head about my own body that something's up with the right side for sure. And I do think it's like, wow, it is in this hip, like, ooh. And then I push the muscle and it's like rock hard. If I push the muscle on the other side, it's not the same. It's a little bit hard, but not the same. Wow. Yeah. Just getting to know your own body. It actually is pretty amazing because it can go with this idea of like not caring what other people think, right? We misidentify as our bodies so much. Like this thing that I'm presenting to you is who I am and I'm presenting and it's like wrong, right? There's, I don't know, whatever, there's a, a I've got roles. <laughs> and uh i don't know like some chicken chicken wings or whatever whatever it is that i'm like conscious of it, i'm only conscious of it because i think it's wrong and people are going to look at me and judge me a certain way because i also look and judge myself that way and then if someone also like a partner says that i'm beautiful i'm like oh okay like or something <laughs> and the reality is that this is just like like when did you agree to uh, someone else having a perfect body but like do you even know what that perfect body is like what the measurements are what it looks like like where did we learn that stretch marks were like a bad thing And who cares? Like, who cares if you have stretch marks? That's the the path to true self-love. This is what I think. You know, I I love that. I even have people in my life, they they say they love themselves and I'm super excited for it. And I I think that sometimes just by the the constant like changing of the appearance there is question for me like I'm glad you feel better and it's based off of this like external presentation I mean I don't think I'm sitting here judging with you know teeth that were straightened tattooed eyebrows but still good arches <laughs> and the complete tattoos all over my entire body like what's that Total self-acceptance is like loving myself now instead of, you know, in losing 10 pounds or having no forehead wrinkles or.
a couple more breaths. I don't know about you. I'm feeling this one. And just like we did on the other side, kind of like loosen up the shoelace pose and take the right leg back behind you. Come into your, your pigeon or Indian. It's known as the swan. Oof. Adjusting the front leg to a space that feels good for you a position <sighs> and take a few moments don't head straight into it like take take your time let the tissues warm up feel it in your body and then when you feel when you feel ready move into the posture that you want to take so do you want to stay right where you are with your hands or do you want to come down onto the elbows maybe add a bolster or pillow maybe come all the way down like what feels good to you do that and explore feel remember your breath it's such a beautiful outlet for as anything comes up your breath will just like take it out of the body Imagine it's like the direct route from wherever it is outside of you. The releasing of tension, the acknowledgement of feeling and sensation in your body. Notice where your mind is at and bring it back to your breath.
And if they aren't there already, bring your hands below your shoulders and come back up to a higher swan. Taking a few moments to feel this posture in your body. Take your time and come onto the left hip and bring the right leg across the body. Coming back to your fire log or your square pose. And take the time to set it up. Clearly, this side is different. I like to keep in yin, we don't really want muscular engagement. And in this posture, I do like to keep the toes flexed when I'm setting up into the posture to take care of the knees. Now, this one's severely different. <laughs> Again, there goes my ego. Like, oh, what's everybody going to think? Did you guys see how, you know, like how much better I was on the other side? So I need to back off to find my edge. Remember to breathe. A new tunnel, new sensations. One more breath. And then Take your time, oh, bring the legs out in front of you, long. And take a moment to notice how you feel. That like felt that a lot. And then I would love for you to grab a strap if it's close by. A strap, a scarf.
a mat carrier. And if not, that's okay. I'll cue both with and without it. In the meantime, I want you to come all the way down onto your back. I want you to, <laughs> you can do whatever you want. And bend your knees and then walk your heels towards your bum and walk the heels out as wide as your mat and let the knees fall in towards one another. And bend your elbows and bring your hands behind your head with your elbows out to the sides. <sighs> and breathe. Let your knees come back up towards the ceiling in a, new, a more neutral position. And then take a hold of the strap if you have one. And bring your right leg up into the air. And decide what are you going to do with your left leg? Are you going to keep it bent? Or do you want to start to walk it away from your body? If you have a strap, bring it around the ball of the right foot. Whatever you feel is right for the left leg, do that. And then come back to the right leg. So a couple things. If you don't have a strap, take a hold of like right where the knee is. Unless, of course, you're like super flexible, you could take a hold of the big toe. But notice if your shoulder blade comes off the ground to take a hold of the foot. You don't have to. Remember, we don't care what we look like. <laughs> right? And what I think works best is if the leg is long. So if you're trying to get it close to you and it's bending, I would take it away from your upper body and and straighten it more and then if you're using a strap i say a lot of people probably find straps to be more annoying because they're doing a lot of hard work to use them so notice if you can on uh, you know on the video my elbows are bent so that means if i'm doing this i have to engage my arms to help me out if i walk my hands up the strap until my arms are straight and then i take a wrap of the straps in either hand my arms are straight so my muscles aren't engaged like i'm doing less work yet my arms are still acting as weights and when my hamstring kind of loosens and stretches and my leg will come a little bit closer to my body but like long not bent hopefully that makes sense <laughs> it's exactly the same if you're taking a hold of your leg you can start to walk your hands up but remember what edge we're going to be here for some time and if you're pushing it you're going to start wiggling if your leg is shaking that means you've gone too far it's like just not just it's like back off 
be kind and still feel a bit of a stretch in your hamstring. That's what we're doing here. Stretching the hamstrings and then and breathe. I like to imagine in my cavern exploration, I've added down my hip into my right leg. And any tension or tightness from my hamstrings, I acknowledge, I feel, I notice. And my goal is to imagine it like loosening. Every exhale, a little bit of tension leaves my body. And then bring the straps into one. Right hand takes a hold of the strap. If you are taking a hold of the leg, you know, grab where you had it on the outside and kind of around. And then start to open the leg out to the right. and breathe going to wherever it feels like you feel it it's uncomfortable there's a stretch but like you could go further and then breathe into that area you could add a prop if that feels accessible without moving too much Right, because we don't want to be activating the muscles too much in a yin practice. We're not stretching muscles here. We're stretching fascia and tendons and ligaments. Breathe. Long, slow, deep breaths in. Long, so deep breaths out. One more breath. And then slowly engage the core. Bring the leg back up into center and take a moment. And then, okay, listen to these cues. Connect to your sits bones and both of your hips, like your pelvis. And feel how you're like beyond below your lower back, where your sits bones are, where your pelvis bones are. I want you to feel them on the ground. And then as we bring the leg across the body, we're only going to go to a point where everything stays on the mat. 
if you go too far, this is going to lift up the sit bone or the hip or the pelvis. We don't want that. Not yet. We want to keep the, the whole back. Think of the torso as a, a rectangle. We're keeping that whole rectangle on the ground and switching the grip of our hands from right to left. Forgot to give you that cue, I think. <laughs> and then drawing the leg across the body. And this stretch, it's not a twist. It's a stretch on the outer thigh. And we will go further into the twist, but right now what we're doing is we're stretching the IT band. So go as far as you can without that hip, the pelvis, the butt lifting up off the mat. And feel that the, the IT band is, it's like a big, huge tendon that runs down the outer thigh and a bunch of other muscles and tendons like join to it. So it can get really tight. It can cause um, IT band syndromes like extremely painful. And because it's fascia, right? If it's not stretched out, then it starts to shrink. So that can, that can mess with things. And double check that you're still like pulling the leg towards the body. And then we're going to open up fully. If you want, you could stay and keep stretching the IT band if that feels like, yeah, you really needed that. Or you can come all the way across the body with the right leg into a twist. Keep your shoulder blades on the mat. And you can try both and decide which one you would rather do. It's totally up to you. You can still feel a little bit in the IT band, but it moves more up into like the, the hip, the, the side butt. One more breath. And bring the leg all the way back up into center. Release the strap or your grip on the leg. Bend the knee plant, the right foot on the mat. And bring the left leg up into the air. So whichever works for you, strap around the ball of the foot or take a hold of just underneath the knee at the leg, the calves and the shins. And then choose what you're going to do with the right leg. Keep it bent or start to straighten it out. Remember, come back to the left leg. Rather than it being closer to the body and bent, have it further away from the body and straight. So that the stretch is going directly into the hamstrings, which are the backs of your thighs. And then breathe. See if you can relax your body. Like notice if you're tensing because the stretch is too intense. And if it is, just back off just like a tiny bit. And use your breath to calm the body and release your tension.
there for the transition, either removing the grip with the left hand um, on the leg or, or with the right hand um, or with your strap, move everything into the left hand and then start to open the left leg out to the left. One more breath. In. Across the body, keeping the pelvis, the sacrum, the butt, whatever the, the, the thorax, your torso, whatever words work for you, just know bar, it's lifting the hip up. I want to keep it down, but I still want the body or the leg is across my body as much as I can. And I can really feel it here. Actually, I'm like numb here. <laughs> and breathe. And then you have the option, stay right here with the IT band stretch or come all the way across the body, keeping both your shoulder blades on the ground. Breathe, explore, release.
and then take a breath. Bring your leg back up. Oh, release your grip. Bend the left knee, bring the sole of the foot to the mat. Oh. Bring both of your knees into your chest, hug them in. Bring your forehead up to touch your kneecaps, squeeze your body round your spine. Kiss your knees. Good morning. Mwah. Mwah. Release your head back down to your mat. Take a hold of the outer edges of your feet. Bring the soles of the feet up towards the ceiling. Happy baby. Take a few moments. Sway from side to side. Roll out your low back. <sighs> and then settle into center. Finding stillness in your happy baby pose. It's always... Like, <laughs> I love people being uncomfortable. Um, and I know how many people love happy baby. And I know there's people out there that don't either. Because when I first started, I was like, this is the worst pose I've ever done in my whole entire life. <laughs> I don't feel that way anymore. And I can, I'm going to support you <laughs> in this posture here to feel like how much work is really done in happy baby. So we're yin and happy baby pose. So what does that mean? Find your edge and then find complete stillness. Commit to be here and breathe. Notice where your mind's at and come back to your breath. Release your feet. Bring them back down to the mat. And then walk them out long. Give yourself a big stretch. Oh. And then push the back of your head into your mat and roll your shoulders down your spine. Allow your arms to fall away from your body and your palms to face the ceiling. And take a long, slow, deep breath in all the way to the bottom of your lungs. Let it out with a sigh. Let go of your breath and allow your body to breathe itself. Take all of the thoughts that you have in your head right now and allow them to ooze out of the crown of your head onto your mat and away from you.
Take a moment to remind yourself that you're doing a good job. Like period in all the things and tell your mind, shut the F up <laughs> right now if it's saying anything other than that. We're all here doing our best, whether, you know, our best changes from day to day. And how much more encouraging is it to see yourself like where you are and give yourself creds for that? Because I think you can really only go higher from there. If you're constantly shit talking yourself, no matter if you're having a good day or a not so good day. I just wonder how that's going to help. So once again, remind yourself of what a really good job you're doing at life. Regardless of the circumstance, you're here, you're breathing, you're here, like taking a yoga class right now, taking my yoga class in which I'm reminding you of what a good job you're doing. This is significant. And then start to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Ooh, hug your knees into your chest. Roll from side to side. Eventually rolling onto one side. Use your bicep as a pillow. Take a breath. Use the strength of one of your hands to bring yourself up to seated. Once you're here, roll your shoulders down your spine. And rest your hands on your knees or your thighs. And take some long, slow, deep breaths in and out. Return to your normal breath. Option to bring your hands to heart center and bow your head. Thank you so much for allowing me to guide you through your practice this morning. From my heart to yours. Namaste.